All right, welcome to Song Autopsy, where I put my kindergarten show and tell skills to use in the adult world. Uh, today I'm going to be breaking down my latest release, Odd Lang Syne 22. So a few years ago, I got hired to play at the Vancouver Christmas Market, and it's this really fun gig. They stick you at the top of this giant windmill that they call the Christmas Pyramid, and you play Christmas tunes, you watch people getting hammered on glue wine. It's a great night out. The only slight snag for me was that I had never really played a Christmas show at this point. And so I had about three or four days to put together two hours worth of Christmas material. So I'm in my bedroom and I'm panicking, trying to put together these arrangements in time. And I get to Odd Lang Syne and for some reason I start to play it in this, uh, in this kind of funky style. And it sounded uh, a little bit like this. Um, Should I acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind. Should our acquaintance be forgot in days of our lang syne? Yeah. And it had that kind of um, 16th note feel to it, that disco swing. And I thought that sounded really cool. And so I, I, I put together this loop cover of it, threw it up on YouTube. Um, I performed it at the Christmas market. Uh, but then I just forgot about it, um, until recently, that is. I came back to it, and I, I realized I don't think anyone's done a version of Odd Lang Syne in that came, same kind of funky disco feel. And so I thought uh, maybe I'd try and be the first. And I started working on the arrangement, and the arrangement is mostly based off of this George Michael track called Waiting for That Day. And he does something really unique on that track. He takes this um, drum sample called The Funky Drummer, and that's taken from an earlier James Brown song. And um, everyone was using this drum sample at the time, anywhere and everywhere. And George Michael, to make it unique, is he slowed it right down to be uh, kind of at a ballad tempo. And then he threw this organ over top of it, and it sounds almost like a church organ or a classical organ. And the juxtaposition of those two elements made it sound really interesting and weird. And uh, when I started working on this tune, I thought I'd try and do a similar thing. And uh, because I don't have George Michael money, I made my own version of the sample and distorted it so it sounded like it was taken off a of vinyl. Um, I layered it up with some guitar, some percussion, um, a tack piano, and of course the organ. And it sounded a little bit like this. And uh, I thought that sounded pretty cool. So I ran with that template and I started to build the song out from there. Um, one of the first challenges I ran into here was that Odd Lang Syne is basically a repeating chord progression played over and over and over again, right? Because it's a Christmas carol, everyone needs to be able to sing it easily. Um, and I realized that a couple minutes into the song, the arrangement was starting to sound really boring and kind of dull. And so I started brainstorming ideas, uh, I think, just to keep the listener engaged throughout the song and to keep things sounding fresh. And eventually I settled on this, that I would um, do these Beach Boys style harmonies, but every time they punched in, I'd add extra layers to it and extra harmonies so that it would sound more dense and interesting every time it came in. And uh, so in the first chorus, I have five harmonies laid up here. Uh, second chorus, I move up to eight. And then in the breakdown section, uh, I use those eight harmonies, but then I throw in four more. And those four act kind of as a unit. And what I liked about this was that it became almost uh, a dialogue, this counterpoint dialogue between the eight and the four. And when I played them together, they sound really neat. And to emphasize this a little bit, I also hard panned the counterpoint vocals. And what that means is that if you're listening like on earbuds or headphones or something, you're going to hear you're going to hear them moving across the stereo spectrum from left to right and then back to left as this really cool effect. And uh, I'm going to play it for you now, see if you can spot it. I thought that was pretty cool. 
but I did need one more element to round out the song, and um, I wanted it to kind of have this big crescendo finale and then drop back down to end. And uh, what I eventually settled on here was taking a page out of Brian May's book, uh, Brian May being the guitarist from Queen. And something he'd do a lot was he'd take his guitar, which had this really phasey, um, overdriven sound to it, and he'd play it in harmony with himself. So he'd play like three, four harmonies of it and play them all at once. And it has this big, wide, uh, kind of majestic sound, which is perfect for Queen. And uh, I decided to do something similar. So I played the melody of Auld Lang Syne in octaves on the guitar. And then I layered up a couple more uh, harmonies over top of that. And when they played together, they, uh, they sound pretty good. It sounds like this. And um, that's basically it. That's my version of Odd Lang Syne. Uh, I always really liked the tune for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, it was always getting stuck in my head. And so it was fun to put a kind of fresh, modern spin on it. Um, plus, it was in the public domain, so I didn't have to pay royalties to release it. So I'm going to score. Um, as my Christmas gift to all of you lovely listeners, I made it uh, available to download for free. We're a little late now. We're into January, but you can still download it if you want it. It's in the link below. Um, hope you enjoyed the breakdown, and I'm going to see you guys soon. Bye.